Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Golf Subpar. I am Colt Nost, joined, as always, by my man Drew Stoltz. How are we doing, Sleaze? Hanging in there, Colty. Hanging in there a little better now with the uh, the recent news. Allegedly, golf back mid-June in a very familiar town for both of us, Fort Worth, Texas, down in Colonial. Mean, where you're a legend, you can barely go around there without security. Surprised they haven't reached out to me yet, asking me to come down there, hit the ceremonial open tee shot myself. Gary Patterson, Ladanian, Hogan, a lot of greats coming out of Fort Worth, bro. Well, we are very excited for that. But some, and some other exciting news, don't know if you know, this little documentary mm. has recently been released about Michael Jordan and the 97-98 Chicago Bulls. Yeah, as you watch the first oh two hours. Oh, my God, I can't get enough of it. I need it to be next Sunday again already. It's hard to, like, we're so spoiled now with Netflix, no commercials. You can, the uh, season gets released, you can watch 10 in a row. Like, after that one ended, I was like, next. Give me yeah. the next. I, don't, I, I need more. It's hard to not binge, but that thing was... That thing was sweet. Dude, one thing I had no idea about, this was like super eye-opening, was how about Scottie Pippen being like the 122nd highest paid player in the NBA during that run when he was arguably the second best player in the NBA? That is nuts. It's nuts. He was very, very underpaid for how good he was, but now it all makes sense. Like I do a lot of those things at Aria in Vegas, and his nickname around the hotels in Vegas is No Tippin' and Pippin'. And now I get it. He just didn't have the money to It's tip not out. his fault, dude. Yeah, He's got the worst is. agent in the history of basketball. Jerry Reinsdorf. I'm mean, paying him some more money. Come on. Yeah. But, well, you the second best player in the league? Okay, cool. We'll get you the 122nd best contract. Yeah. You know, that sounds good. Sign that. But it's absolutely fantastic, as well as our next interview with a Jordan ambassador, Pat Perez. And here he is. Okay, our next guest, three-time PGA Tour winner and a man with – Hair that has been blessed by the gods, the one and only Pat Perez. Welcome to Golf Subpar, my man. Thank you, boys. Wow. Good to be with I you. I mean, the one and only. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank God there's only thank one, dude. God. There ain't enough room for two. I've heard that before. The hair does look good, though, by the way. What's the upkeep like on a on a, on a, Brutal. On a wig like that? You got to wash that thing? I put it up every day. I tie it up, and then I put a backwards hat on every day because I've been outside doing shit. But, uh yeah, I figured I'd put it down for you guys. What's the what's the washing schedule like? Is that a, that once ain't a, a daily wash, is it? Once a week. Once, once a, a week, week you wash your hair. That's nice. Yeah. Once Incredible. Yeah. I just get tired of it, you know. When did this whole thing come about? This I kind of like that. Tired of shaving. Chin music. I, it takes every effort I have just to shave this with my electric razor. I just don't have any time or energy to shave. Are you worried at all about some of the gray coming into the hair? No, no I kind of like that. It's already there. That's Not dignified. Really. It's in the it's in the bottom down here, which sucks. No, it's hidden well. You can't pull out, pick out any gray in that. I'll tell you what, the, my neck top. looks great though. Look how no, you would never know. You look incredible. I well, always think you, I always compliment you every time I see you how great you look. <laughs> the looks but, are not a concern. The wife will not let me cut the hair. I actually thought about shaving like you. I was going to go down and yeah, yeah. take it down tight. I thought, you know, if I had like eight months off, then I would, it would come back enough, and then you'd I could be back go, to normal. Then, uh, I'll just tie it. I feel like this is going to be our most viewed YouTube episode just because they get to see how beautiful <laughs> They're going to want to see it. You don't know what it's like till you get up close to it. How long has it been, how long has it been like that? How long? I think I started about what, when you're five first, years ago, something like that. Yeah, about five years ago. It's fairly – because you were first on tour, dude. I like saw some pictures of you like brand fresh out on tour, and I was like, oh, my oh, – like, yeah. dude, you look nothing. No. You know I what I mean? When, let's see. When, you had the visor with the sunglasses and short hair. When I Let's see. When I met Ashley, I had, I had shaved head. Totally shaved, and I had a huge goatee. And it was actually funny because I, <laughs> I was, we were drunk at the club, and I go, "No." I said, "So rate me." I said, "You know, give me a number. Give me a number." Rate me like one to ten. Yeah, she yeah, goes, yeah. You're about a five. <laughs> well, five. I said, "Status alone, I'm an eight. I'm an eight, but just yeah. the status." Well, you I should said, be happy. If I'm on that corn fairy. Don't mean that much to her. <laughs> if I'm a corn fairy <laughs> exactly. guy, I'm a five. I'm like, she goes, "You look so much better now than you did." I go, "What do you mean?" I said, "The goatee was money. We know that. Shaved head and have to do anything with it. I always wore the visor." Yes. Now I go with flat brim and, and long hair and goatee will go away. Look, I get it. Girls aren't attracted to your look. See, but okay? your beard is money. I, well, my, my beard is freaking my, clean. Mine doesn't come in that thick. So well, mine up top doesn't yeah, come in that it's thick. All, it all balances the out. The white dude, pisses you know I mean? me off. It does piss me off. I mean, but. unless you're Mark Mulder, you can't have it all. Yeah, God, and true. he does have it all. And he's sold his soul somewhere along the Damn, line, Damn, that too, bastard so. has everything. I mean, yes. some guys just have it all. But we are here to talk about him. I hate him. We are here to talk about him. Plays golf. Great. Yeah. Baseball, great. I mean, shoot a basketball. I mean, the guy can do anything. Yeah, it's disgusting. He can throw a ball, a football, farther right-handed than I can throw it my right-handed. Well, he's like 6'6". Six, six. Right. I he's mean, he's a massive human. He's yeah, he's and But we're not here to talk about him. We're yeah, here thank to talk God. about Pat yeah. Perez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pat, I want to get into some early years with you because you happen to be the same age as this guy named Tiger Woods. Oof. You grew up Southern California, right, right near Tiger. 
Give us your first time you ever met Tiger Woods as a junior golfer. I didn't really meet him, but I saw him at Presidio Hills. We were both eight. We've actually talked about this. Um, Presidio Hills is like a, what is it, 500 yards maybe? Each, each hole's like, some are 30, some are 60. One, I think the longest hole was like 80 at the time. Sounds and, like my kind of place. <laughs> cold, exactly. Cold is salivating But they're right like now. dome. They're like Perfect. opposite, you know, upside down bowls for greens. Um, and that's why I saw him the first time. His dad was obviously with him out there and, I think he won. Uh, I think he won at ten, and then we played at Mission. Uh, was it Mission Trails? What the hell did we play? Mission Trails eleven twelve. I didn't really get to meet him until. Um, God, I don't think I really met him until we were like thirteen, fourteen. Because he won. He won at fourteen. I finished fourth, so we were on you know this thing together. And I think I just said hi or whatever. But I think he he didn't really kind of notice me until seventeen when he was going for eight straight or not eight straight, but eight junior worlds, which was like you know winning. Everything, obviously. But uh, so we're playing at Torrey, my home course. I finally, you know, get my stuff together. And he took off on six. We had to wait on six like we always do now on tour. And he was out there. And I didn't I didn't wait. I just hit. And a ball ran through his legs. And <laughs> Hello, that's world. When I, that's when I was really long, like really long back in the day. And, you know, we, we didn't really talk for a little bit. Then I got my moment. I played with him uh, when ASU played Stanford. I told the coach, said, I want to play with him. I'm playing with him that 36 whole day. I got to see it. I want to, you know, I want to go because obviously it was, he was so amazing growing up. You know who he was, but nobody knew really who he was. You know, he was, did his own thing and he lived up in Cyprus, which was, you know, a good hour and change from us anyway. So that was kind of the first time we really talked and hung out and, and this and that. It was so funny because ASU, Larry Barber, mm -hmm. he played with him at, at our <laughs> tournament, the Thunderbird. He was, I'm going to get this bastard. I'm going to get him today. I'm going to get him. I'm going to see him. I'm going to get his ass today. He's a freshman. I'm going to work his ass. He comes off that 18th hole, and he goes, that my <laughs> good. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly like LP. That's What do you say? Yeah. That Good. Yeah, he just walked off, and he got his ass kicked, and that was it. Uh, That's incredible. But you beat him. Correct me if I'm wrong. You beat him in the junior world. What was it? 93, I think, right? 93. Like he had won a million in a row. You went out. Yeah. You beat him by a lot. And you were not only that, but you like you were not even. You didn't own golf clubs at the time. Is this true? Is no. this a true story? Uh, you like borrowed clubs and went and Greg, killed Tiger Woods. Yeah, Greg Padilla's dad gave me a set of beryllium I twos, which I I'd always wanted, but we couldn't afford them, obviously. So he gave me a set, and he gave me some other clubs, uh, some wedges. So I had the I had the one through L, and a three wooden driver. And, you know, back then, Torrey was only like 6,800 yards, so it wasn't, it wasn't like today, which I wish it was still like that, <laughs> but it's not. But uh, he gave me those, and then I, I won the Cal State Junior, and then I won Junior World, and then I won the Max Fly PJ uh, Junior in uh, Orange, uh, Florida. All playing with different – not no, even your own set. stuff. Same set. Same set, but it wasn't yours. It wasn't like fit to you or anything. It was no, just like, no, yo, I can just, I borrow some I clubs? Like, all right, I'll take these. I wore them out. I mean, they were totally worn out. And um, – you know, I think that's probably when, you know, when Tiger would have noticed me because I won the three biggest tournaments of the summer. and But I still hadn't really seen him because he didn't play the PGA. I was playing with uh, Hank, uh, Hank Keeney, actually. Oh, legend. That. And Floyd was down there, too. I, I, I hung out with him and Floyd the whole time. And, uh, you know, Tiger was a god in, in, in junior golf. Everybody knew who he was. He was obviously the guy to beat. He was so much better than everybody. For just for whatever reason, he was just so much better. His swing was incredible. I just saw some swings the other day, actually, of, of him at 14. I go... And this is better than most people I see every day. And obviously it's only gotten better with time. And, um, yeah, it, it's pretty hard because, you you know, I basically got my ass kicked by him for 36 years now. And, you know, you just – But you got do, the one. I got the one. Do you ever flex on him with that? Be like, hey, dude, they nice 15 majors, but sorry about that. Yeah, sorry they, about that 93 world junior, bro. There is Never get on, that one. There's an interview on YouTube where they ask him <laughs> about me beating him, and, and he didn't like it. He didn't like that one. I mean, <laughs> that you beat him by eight at the 93 junior world. Four years later, he wins the, mm -hmm. the Masters. Four, four years from the four junior years. world <laughs> to the Masters. It's like, uh, that's not normal. No. But, you know, like when he left, he left at 20 from Stanford. And we were all sitting around going, man, what, what's this guy doing? He can't leave. Because nobody left back then. It yeah, was it just, wasn't the thing. It wasn't the thing. It was like you stay in college, you party, you, you do everything. And then when you're 23, you go, oh, okay, well, let's figure out what the hell we're going to do the rest of our life. If we're good enough, we'll try to play golf. If not, and I'm like, man. This guy, you know, because the average age, I think, on tour that time was like 35, oh, 35, 37. So much, yeah. He was so much older. Like, man, yeah. these guys now are so much older. 17. Ex exactly. Yeah. Experience now that's like, you know, at 12, they got gurus and they've got all these things going on to try to get on tour and, and make it. But he was so far ahead of his time. And, you know, when he left, I'm like, man, can he beat these guys? Can he play with these guys? Da, da, da. And then, he, you know, he went to Milwaukee and then 
Bangy wins Vegas, and then obviously wins the Masters, and you know two years later wins everything there is, and he's got the Tiger Slam. And this and that's like, but you know, looking back at it, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, anybody that grew up, see, the, these kids today, they don't really know. They, there's like a kind of a legend of how great he was. Obviously, you can watch it because there's so much video of it, but to be walking the ground with him all the time, yeah, him walking right by it because he won't talk to you, you know, because he's in he's in Tiger mode and this and that. He only played certain tournaments and. It's like, man, this guy is just literally walking God around here. And what do we, you know, we're just going to try to get some money out of this. But how cool is it? You, you, I mean, you're coming up on 20 years on the PGA Tour, which is yeah. incredible. And you have been in the middle of Tiger, the Tiger Woods era. I mean, the Tiger Woods dominated era. How cool is it to play in the middle? I mean, obviously it sucks because he won every week. <laughs> Other than not ever getting a chance to win, it's no, kind it's of been pretty cool. No, it's actually great because I told, like I told on the Rome show, I said, you know, I don't need to win 100 tournaments. I don't need to be this and that. I said, I'm never going to be Tiger. I don't even care about it. But I said, the crumbs are pretty good. Yeah. What he's done for this game and what he's done for all of us, and, you know, all the way down from the players down all the way, everybody's made more money. I said, but when you're playing – and you're in those big purses, the crumbs are good. I said the crumbs create a nice life, and I have no problem. You know, everybody, you know, should thank him for it, and it's just amazing. It's incredible what he's done for, for the game, and, you know, it's been – but, yeah, it has been awesome to see uh, somebody be that incredible, like right in front of your eyes. And the fact yeah, that we're the like same history. age, you know, because they say, you know, is Tiger your idol? I say he's not my idol He's because he's not – he's my age. So I've seen it. he's he is obviously an icon, and you know I, I respect the hell out of him for what he's done. But it's different because he's not like Jordan's my guy. He's he was older, you know. He's older. He's it's hard to tell. Yeah, you know, <laughs> watched him and this and that. It's 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 just different. It's not that I don't respect the hell out of him, but he's him being my age. It's like I don't know. It's just something yeah. different about it. What about these dudes like Rory and Jason Day? I'm thinking like when Tiger was first coming back of all the back surgeries and like. Man, I, I I wish I could have got a chance to play Tiger in his prime. I hope he comes back like his prime. Like, what do you no, think? What no, do you think no, when don't. you hear people say, that? "Yeah, they no, don't they want don't. that," right? Like, just, it was just a different ball game. They have no idea. They have an idea. They, they never saw it live. They have no idea how good this guy was. I mean, it was absolutely spooky what this guy could do with a, a club and a ball in any situation when the heat is on. I mean, think about the pressure you guys have for just like a hundred dollar putt at the Rock. Mm -hmm. You know, now times that by a major or, you know, you got every eyeball watching you. You got all the pressure you can possibly have and you make it look like nothing's happening. He that was it, so yeah. amazing because he turned these hard situations into something that looks so easy. And then you go out and try to go, how the hell does this guy do this? I mean, how, how does he make it look so easy? And he did. Have you ever had any, um, I should probably know this, but have you ever had any battles coming down the stretch on Sunday with him? Were you mm. up there? I played with him. I played him three times on tour, all on Saturday. I think all on Saturday. Huh? No, and you got him one year on Sunday at Bay Hill because I played with you on Saturday. I think I got him. Sunday. I know I've gotten him once. I got him. I got him once on the weekend. I, I think it was actually a rare stat where somebody that was playing with him beat him on the weekend in his group. Yeah, yeah that, that was when he was out. like beating people by six shots. Yeah, and that, they, they it just didn't happen. Yeah. You know, it's it's happened probably a little bit more now, but you know, back then, I mean, he was the most. <laughs> You couldn't – the only, you know, the, the numbers for a favorite were just incredible. It didn't matter who we have. He was unbelievable. But there have been some great battles with, like, VJ and Phil, you know, the one at, at Doral, and then VJ at um, – even Phil had another one at, at TBC Boston. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been some great battles with it. Bob May. I mean, Bob back May, in the day. Bob May. That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. One of the best. Ed Fiore. Yeah. <laughs> Ed Fiore beat him. At John Deere. John Deere. Yep. I mean, there are some things, but – you know, as a whole, nobody's, nobody's got But going, going, <laughs> back to what, that. going back to what you said about how much he's meant to the game and how much money he's made everybody. Like, they came out with this stat a few years ago. When he came on tour, like, the average winner's check was 350000 And two years ago, it was, like, $1.15 million. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that ain't because of the economy. That's because of Tiger Woods. I would tell you right now, if I was Mark Steinberg and I was sitting in the office with the TV people, and I said, every time Tiger comes on TV, I want 50% of that cash. I don't want it, but I want it for him. And what are they going to say? No, no, no. We just won't. True. We just won't show Tiger. He yeah. can be a hundred over par, yeah. and oh, they're they, going to show. They're going to show him walking down the, the bathroom. Yeah, exactly. They're going to show him from the parking lot to the, and rightfully so. At this point, at forty-four years old, with everything this guy's gone through in the last 10, 12 years, you know, rightfully so. I got no problem with it. You know, it is what it is. And but I would say I want some of that TV money because the TV money and all the TV and all the eyeballs, the numbers are so far through the roof when he's around. 
It's incredible. Doesn't matter how he's playing, even in Genesis. Yeah, yeah. Guys on TV every time they're not watching. You know, I don't even know who the hell was in seventh, but they're not watching him. Mm-mm. Even when he came back at Phoenix a few years ago, had the chipping yips. I mean, they, they couldn't get enough of it. It's a Here's huge Tiger story. Woods plus yeah, hundred, yeah. and you're not even seeing the guy that's got to put to tie the lead. They don't care. But that's what everyone wants to see. But nobody now. cares. You and know, that's why the purses are massive. You know, but that you know, I, I just hope. I hope he can stay healthy for a little bit longer. I'd love to see him get that 19th. I, I think he's going to get the 83rd win, you know, pretty soon here. I, sorry, I think it'll be within a year that he gets that 83rd win, you know, like this this calendar year of 20. But uh, the 19 would be really unbelievable. I yeah. was actually talking to him about the Champ Tour, and I said, you know, what do you would, say about that? would you ever think about playing? Because there's only one thing I want. Because I want that U.S. Senior Open trophy. Really? Because then he has them all. Oh, he has every USGA. He has every USGA oh. trophy. Oh. I yeah. said, bro, he didn't get the mid am, dude. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, he never got that. Yeah, but I mean, Good think call. about yeah. how that all the major that would be <laughs> unbelievable to have. Yeah. U.S. Junior, U.S. Am, U.S. Open, Senior Open, which nobody has. Yeah, that would be a first. I'm so, sure that's interesting. I never even thought about that. Said, but he bro, said you that. You got at least huh? try a couple years. Yeah, I mean, it's just one week. It needs one crack at it. Yeah. If his back it's, is still yeah. in one piece, try it. If you don't, go you get know, it. No one's going to care anyway. What's the difference? But at least you know if you get it. You can play one event a year out there. Yeah, incredible. he can play one event now if he wants to. Yep. That's the thing about him is he can do whatever he wants. You know, even this new schedule that's coming out, I don't, I don't see him coming out any time before. He, I think he's going to play Memorial and he'll play the playoffs and that's it. You know, he, he's yeah, not he a guy that's it. playing for status. He's not a guy that's playing for, mm-hmm. you know, he, he wants to get the wins, obviously, but I think he's really going to get himself ready for that, that – Fall schedule, it's going to be busy with majors and WGCs. You know, we were talking before the show, and you were like, this break, you've kind of embraced it a little bit. It's kind of a nice little break. And for him, it's got to be actually great as well because he he was kind of hurting before. Now he's got this time to kind of go ahead and get ready. What have you – but but since we are here to talk about you, what (laughs) what in the hell have you been doing during during this break? Bro, I got no time. I got no problem talking about Tiger because he has put so much money in my pocket. You know, the thing I actually hate is that, you know, when people do say – Look how much money he's made you. Well, that's not as true. That's not a true statement. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I get what it. he has done actually has provided a lot of money for us to play for. It's not like he gets. Yeah. yeah it's not like he gets the person where he goes, ah, here's twenty for you, sixty for you, eighty for you. He's provided. I mean, quadruple the money for us to play for, which is unbelievable. But it doesn't actually make us the money. We still got to go out. Yeah. Make the cut. You know, beat the other you know great players and then actually make some money. So that I, I hate when someone puts that out there. And go, oh, look how much money he made you. Well, he didn't. yeah, they don't just hand it. No, out, he dude. gave us what he did is gave us an amazing opportunity to make more money. So, but um, the hell was the question? Quarantine. Quarantine. What the hell, what the hell, hell have you been Bro, doing? I've been outside every day. You can ask my man H. <laughs> We've got we bought this house three years ago. We've been remodeling for about you know two, two years, two and, eight years and eight months. Yeah, two yeah. years and eight months. <laughs> sure just torn it down. <laughs> Couldn't. Built another one. That would have cost too much. That would have cost a, a hell of a lot more. But we, um, we, um, so I started on this project, and I actually we moved in Christmas Eve, and I, you know I've got like I guess I got about three months off maybe total, but I've got like three years worth of stuff to build. I mean we got five acres. I've been cutting down trees and moving trees and moving rocks and moving dirt. I mean I, I'm an outside every day just like. Trying to get the stuff done. I haven't even focused on the inside yet. Which well, let I me have tell you, another stuff to do. In my opinion, the coolest thing about your new house, yes, you'll love this, is I, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. The tapenaki grill. Tapenaki, yeah. You have. He has a tapenaki grill at his house. Yeah, he can Benny Hanna the hell out of it. It's, right a, there it's at actually home. the one from Benny Hanna. Can, can you work that thing? Oh, bro. Are you nice? I'll show that? you the video. I would like to see I that. Or some, you could just divide us over and cook. Yeah, or we yeah, could just yeah. go over and see it. Actually, yeah. we'll do that too. I had some pollo asado the other day on there. That thing was nice. Made burgers on it because it was that storm we got the other night. I was gonna grill outside. You gotta see the outside barbecue. Now that's where it's at. They got smoker, smoker, pizza oven, smoker, gas grill, charcoal grill, wok, fridge. Because you need all that's, that. That's what you, you need. need. All of it. That's how you host. It's a little longer than this. That's a good host. It's a little longer right here. Sleaze but. and I order from Chipotle. But <laughs> <laughs> Literally <laughs> every day, dude. <laughs> Literally every day. I got about the same schedule every day. I go in the morning. If Piper doesn't have her food, I go down to AJ's and pick up all her stuff because we make her a, we make her food every meal for her. So we we. You know, there's like eight ingredients that go in the Vitamix and make her a smoothie when she gets up. And then we'll make her eggs and avocado and all this kind of stuff. And then she has a snack and then nap and that kind of stuff. And then dinner. And, but it's pretty much the same routine every day. I'll work from like 9 to 3 and then come inside, shower, and get right in the sauce until about 8 o'clock. <laughs> pass yeah. out. I have to try to work as, yeah. as, I can, as long as I can so I don't yeah. get in the booze. Tomorrow yeah, yeah. we got that. We got that. The poker. I'm going to be in the booze at 9 o'clock. I mean, 
Yeah. But I have to. <laughs> I just I might, I might bring my computer three and, and I get in the You sauce. should. And we'll just play together. Come over to the house. Yeah. I got go in the else. shoe room. Hold on. Let me. Yo, that, that's room? another thing I want to ask about the shoe room. So you've you seen it. Obviously, I've seen pictures of it, but let me see the one you're about to pull. What do you got? A thou- So it's basically for those listening who don't know about it, you got a thousand pairs of Jordans in this one room. This one only has, that's, that's only about 460 right there. Just for it's just wall to wall, massive room. Well, there's all another How many do you own in like in yeah, total? It's about that, about thousand. thousand. I, I have to, Quick I have foul. to, the other, the other side of the closet. Well, Jeez. that the other side of that room is going to be the same because I've just literally got a, I'm so it'll room. be both just wall to wall, floor to ceiling. It'll be, a, it'll be a thousand in that room. There's another probably 80 in my closet. All right, quick hypothetical your house is burning down, you only have time to run in and grab one pair of shoes. Ooh, what do you good grab? question. I'd grab the Wahlbergs. Ooh. That he signed for me. I grabbed the box and that. Oh, you got a little little custom pair from Marky Mark. He gave me the greens. They're only a size ten. Hello, friends. Which <laughs> <laughs> I can. I know I got two pairs of socks. I know I got. I'll curl my toes, yeah. dude. We went to this house for dinner in L.A. a couple years ago, and I said, "Bro," I said, "We went up and saw his collection. He has the one of one Transformers. He's got all these Anything. these sick shoes. They're just unbelievable." But the guy wears Adidas golf shoes. Yeah. I said, "What are you doing?" That's, yeah, that's what weird. are you doing? Yeah. Wow, these are comfortable. I go. Bro, I, these could be concrete with spikes in them. These Jordans, I would wear them. Yeah. I said, I'm not wearing Adidas. No chance. So, anyway, so he signed them for me. He signed the box, signed each shoe and this and that. So, I've got displayed in my office next to my, my trophies. But it would probably be that and I don't know. Yeah, that's the one to, to snag. But you're also – you're a Jordan ambassador, correct? Yeah. Jordan athlete. Athlete. Mm-hmm. So, what – do you have like say in like Jordan golf shoes are coming out of the woodworks now? Finally, after so many finally. years, like dude, they're starting to pump well, you know the eleven. All though. of them. You know what stops that is is Tiger and Phil Knight. So oh, they do. So I went to that Jordan trip last year in Monaco. It was all the athletes. It was well, it was only seventy of us because uh, baseball was playing and uh, every other sport was playing. But I, I took off. I took off two weeks to go down. So anyway, we're, we're, they rented out the um, Hotel de Paris in, Mon- in Monte Carlo. Sounds and nice. The, the top floor is about a little bit bigger than this whole building. It's like eighty thousand a night. Okay. Oh, that was a hospitality That's room. It's a nice deal. So he's got this poker table that, that seats fifteen people. In the middle of it, it looks exactly like this. And it's a like an eight foot jump man. So he goes, Hey, let's go over and have a let's go have a drink. So we got tequila. So me and Ashley here, he's right there. Cigars, tequila. I'm like, this is like the hour of a lifetime here. Yeah. And we're just we're shooting the shit and, and talking and uh, you know, to bring up your, you know, that thing. So I said, Hey man, I said, you know, I know we're on the 11s right now. I said, but the first shoe I ever got was out of the trash can. As you know, it was a cement four and I wore them until they were gone. I said, is there any way we can make it a cement 11? He goes, just make the four. I said, let's clarify that a little bit. <laughs> what does that actually mean? He goes, just get a four, put the bottom you want on it and make it. I go, just like that. That's it. That's how it works. He goes, get with G gentry. He goes, give a G and just do it. Well, <laughs> Gentry was on the trip. I beelined it for his ass right after that. I said, look, we got the green light. Let's start doing this. So it took about six months to get them because they come, you know, they come from Taiwan. They come way the hell there. And I got them and I looked at these and I go, I cannot believe that this is actually real. There are only two pair in the world. Hmm. And what they do is they take the cement four top off and they put the bottom of that one on. I don't know why the hell it takes so long, but it so does. I, but I guess you didn't bring sleeves and I have a pair. Well, only customarily two. our guests bring gifts, <laughs> yes. whatever. Well, for your next time, we'll, we'll address yeah. that. So do you have like say in, in what happens in the golf shoe world with Jordans? Like, is that, I will a little bit more. Can you now. lean on stuff? No, and make I, it happen? I, I do. I haven't really yet because uh, the four and the five, I really love. Yeah. So they sent me like 15 pairs of, of fives. I've only got the two pair of fours, but the fives are coming out in like 30 different colors. Well, they were supposed to. I'm do you think you'll get some? Hiatus. Yeah. <laughs> They're on hiatus now, but you know. They will, they will come out again, but yeah, no, I can, um, I text them all the time and, you know, and, and ask them questions and this and that. And, but, um, yeah, I think I can, you know, cause Keegan makes his own, which, you know, yeah. okay. he makes his own Harold. He just wears the standard, the standard 11. He wears black and white all the time. And then, um, Luke Donald wears the uh, grind, the one that doesn't even have spikes. So I'm really kind of the only one that's like involved in trying to make the numbers because when Jordan played, he wore the one through 14 that I, those are like my numbers because that's when he played. So I'd like to make more of those. I, I'm not interested in making my own shoe. I want to take what he's played in and, and bring him to make golf. those in the golf. And, you know, people go crazy. The only thing I hear about on the golf course is the shoes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's all you hear about. Them J's, you know, whatever. You know, I hear that or the hair. Those, it's a toss up. If I had, if I got $5 every time I hear about the shoe or my hair, 
You probably wouldn't be sitting. Uh, here I'd be on retired. <laughs> golf oh, I'd be here. I'd just be. In, I wouldn't be playing golf <laughs> anymore. Did but, you um, see? Uh, they brought back one of the tweets that MJ sent out um, a couple weeks ago. It was this was years ago, but Keegan tweeted to the Charlotte Hornets. They were doing like a question and answer thing, and he qu- tweeted, "He's like, why don't you tell them how I take your money all the time out at Bears Club?" <laughs> and from the Charlotte Hornets account, which MJ owned yeah. or still does, uh, obviously he got a hold of it, and he said. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm not out on the golf course wearing Eric Keegan's. You wear shoes with my name on them, <laughs> yeah. which is greatness. I mean, you yeah. can't. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. By I, the way, Keegan's shoes are ugly. I don't know why he does that. If you're friends with Jordan, wear the cool shit like you wear. Like I, I, I don't know why he wears, wears those. numbers. I'm trying to bring all the numbers to life. You know, I, I want to just design like a sick one. Yeah, you know, do, three, do four. You know, eleven. I'd like to do a low nine. I want to do a low twelve, a low thirteen. Thirteen they have, but I want to do different colors, but. Yeah, there's some real, real cool ones that I want to I want to do, which I'm probably going to try to get. You know, our, keep, our trip our trip got canceled this year, so I can't really get on it. But well, we could keep we, doing that. Yeah, we keep doing about, what you're doing because we need you. We need those things to keep coming. <laughs> well, that's out. what I keep hearing because people send me messages all the time. Hey, bro, when those fours coming out? I go, they're never coming out. But <laughs> you know, they they're like, why? Every question is, why can't we get the shoe? Why is there only so many? Well, they only make fifteen thousand of them in all sizes. It's because Tiger and Phil shut it down because they know that if Jordan got into golf full steam, it, it would take over it the golf it. industry. It's already everywhere. Like you used everywhere. to never see it. Now you go to like member guests. There's a 53 year old dude. There's a 17 yeah. handicap wearing. Every I'm like, age. ah, should I stop wearing these? Every dudes? age. No, yeah. it, it would dominate the golf. And the problem is the TW line would just go down the street. That's it. I had gone. no idea that they had like that. That's why the like the. Uh, like inventory is limited. Yeah, but I asked Tiger last year Memorial. Remember, I, I said, I said, why don't you do a line? Why don't you do a uh, like a uh, what they call lifestyle line and this and that? And make your shoes. And he goes, oh, I can't. I'm not going to tell you what I said. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no. Go ahead. On the record, right now. No, no. But <laughs> you know, he says, why would I do that? I said, why would you do that? I said, you're the only. Why would you athlete, not do that? You're the only athlete on the planet, especially in golf. That could do anything that would take off in five minutes if you put your name on it. Tiger could put out a piece of cardboard with spikes on the bottom of it. People are like, I'll sell. pay $500 for that. You know, the it's Frank the head cover to me is not the thing. That's not it. No. Use your TW. Make a golf shoe. Make clothing. Make sweaters. Make. I said, I said the reason why you would do it is this guy has in a layup in 25 years making $400 million a year. Yeah. That's why you he would needs do a, it. Tiger, Tiger needs a needs, logo. Yes. He I said, but that's logo. you could do it that. It needs some money. You know, yeah, he's I said, strapped bro, right now. But he's really the only athlete. If you look at if you look at basketball, because no, I, I know LeBron's big and Steph and this and that. Every one of those guys' brand combined isn't a sixteenth of the Jordan brand combined. Tiger can do the same thing with his. And I asked him. I said, "Why didn't you? You know, why didn't Tiger take his his thing and then like hand pick guys down the line?" Yeah, you know, because Nike has like sixty guys. Same way Jordan's stuff. done. Yeah, yeah. Why not just pick and go? Hey, I want you. I want you're you. A you know. guy, you're yeah, a T-dub, you're a T Dub yeah. guy. I want Rory. I want J Day. I want you know this. It would and that. take over. And then just make that, and then make it exclusive. Not just have yeah, everybody that's how it is on in basketball. That. I mean, Russell Westbrook's a Jordan guy. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's why Jordan's is cool because he only has a handful of guys. Mm-hmm. He's got like Canelo, you know, in boxing. And they and got like, Zion. He has random yeah. one-off guys. He had got Jeter, Danny, Danny you know? Hamlin. You know, yeah. it's 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 yeah. it's different. That's, that's how the, that's how cool it is. I mean, the Jordan brand. I mean, you've got five-year-old kids nowadays wearing his shoes that have never seen, never this even guy. heard no, of them. But, no. they, yeah. but they know that symbol. Oh, they know. Not to be confused yeah. for the Ben Herman symbol. <laughs> as, as well. I saw it that's the greatest that's shit of sick all time. As a golfer, though, to be a part of that, you know what I mean? Because it's not a like Jordan ain't a golf brand. You know what I mean? No, but you're like one of the dudes that gets picked. It's that's really, be really unbelievable. Cool. I haven't really asked him why he picked me. I'm not, I don't want an answer, really. But I'm actually the Pity. I'm, I'm the oldest. Um, that might be. Yeah. I'm the oldest Jordan ambassador. There is, is that right? Yeah. Well, Jordan. Yeah. You know, think about Jordan athlete. How many are 44 playing their sport? Not many. Only the legends, bro. Only the big dogs. It is cool, though. I'll tell you, though, because growing up watching him and having, you know, not being able to afford anything and then, you know, buying my first real pair at like 22. And then now, you know, 22 years later, I'm sponsored by the guy and I got boxes show up, you know, this high at the house. And I just, they're like, well, I just give them away. I go, bro, I've been buying these things for 20 years. This guy's been idle my forever. I'm not giving anything away. I'm not giving anything. I mean, I, I, I will, I don't care if I'll never wear them. They're going to be here because they were given to me by him. I'm not. I'm not getting rid of them. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about another guy that you're close to. I don't know if he's an idol 
or someone you look up to. I don't know if he's been a positive impact on your career or a detriment to you? your career. Is it you? No, it's not me. Oh, okay. It might be his dad. Another guy uh, that's yeah. absolutely fantastic. <laughs> you met this guy when you were 16 years old, and that's the great John Daly. That it mm. is. So I know you are very close, and, I mean, he is just one of my all-time favorites. He's unbelievable. By the way. Tell us about your relationship with him. I know you met him when you were 16 years old, caddying yeah. in, a, in a pro-am group of his. Yeah, we're caddying in pro-am, and the guys, you know, H and I, we just sit out there on the lot, and we would hope to get somebody, and they'd come over and get you and say, oh, we got John Daly. i go, no shit, that's unbelievable. Like, cool. So we get out there, and someone tells him that um, this is before I went, it's before I went to the world, but they said, oh, this kid's pretty good. You know, he plays college golf or high school golf or right over here, and, da, da, da. and he hits it a long way. I mean, so John, you know, we got on 18 North, the old 18 North, and he goes, let's see it. So he was probably, what, 25 yards ahead of us. I was probably, you know, 25 yards ahead of us, and I hit it. I hit it by about 15 yards. And it was the same swing, long swing, but it was his, that ultra-mid driver. His driver? He gave you his that, driver? That, that, yeah, hit he goes, hit this. Let that me see ul- you hit that it. That ultimate driver. Because it was actually, it was, well, it was a year after he won the PGA. This is when he was 92. The dude. Oh, okay, yeah. This is 92. This is when Raptor he is the stick, guy. Yeah. And she is 30 for 30, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, but anyway, so I, I hit it. I go, man, this is unbelievable. And then I told him about it. He remembered that story when I got on tour in 02, which was what? Uh, 10 years. Eight Pat. years later. 10 years later, 10. something like that. Yeah. 92 to 2002. Hold on. We're not math. Yeah, yeah. Thank God H can do numbers <laughs> very well. I don't do numbers. We'll have our producer <laughs> fact check that, but it feels, yeah, it I don't feels do numbers. right. <laughs> but he remembered that because I... You know, when I got my card, I went up to him. I said, hey, John, I said, it's me. You know, remember from that? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, brother, what's going on? And we've had him ever since. And you're still boys to this day. I talked to him, I talked to him all the time. I just sent little John a pair of fives. The uh, oh, shoot five. First good off, man. Really Uncle crazy. Pat. That kid's going to be good. As long as that he kid can is really good. keep it together. <laughs> He's got to he... keep it together. He's yeah. got to keep it together. That kid's really good. But, you know, John's amazing. John's just a big teddy bear. He, he, he's got a soft heart for everybody. He wants to help everybody. You know, he's... Obviously, I had you know a few problems here and there, but you know I love the guy. He's like he's like an older brother, but um, you know we, we I talk to him all the time. Yeah. You two both, I mean, you remind me of each other kind of on the golf course, a lot of each other. I mean, you're both very aggressive. You're both so naturally talented. Like I mean, people don't realize how talented John Daly is. He's actually one same of the, way with you though. No, but he's he's literally one of the most talented guys there ever was. And the thing about this too, where he got so screwed, how do you win two majors in a year? And you never get picked for a President's Cup or a Ryder Cup. Think yeah. about the shaft you take for that. Deal. How does that happen? Exactly. Even like points wise. Like- and he's pissed about it because if you win a major, like if you win a major day, you're almost basically on the team. Yeah. Back Pretty much. Then, yeah. This guy wins a major and then he wins the other major to, to back it up at 95 and doesn't get a pick. You're yeah. telling me this guy's not good enough? And that was, you know, the Ryder Cup's like a month later than the British Open. And you just yeah, get shot right after. Yeah. It's What's the explanation for that? You know, I've asked him about it. He goes, he just doesn't know. He just wasn't wasn't part of the crew. Just I guess. wasn't like he wasn't quote unquote like this. You know, this was, isn't the I brand he, we want or whatever. I mean, dude, the guys won two majors. Exactly. I mean, you know, you think of how many guys have played this game? Great players have played this game, and have one major. This guy's got two. Dude, you had a similar kind of not the exact same, but similar in what was it 2018? I think when you had been playing so well, you came out, you won, and then they basically revamped how they did the points for the right. Ryder Cup team, they right? Am, am I right here? And yeah. like they if they had done it the way they'd always done it, like you would have been third or fourth on the Ryder yeah. Cup. You were shoe in for the Ryder Cup. And they're like, oh, no. by the way, we're not doing it like that anymore. And that, that win you had, like that doesn't you don't even get both anything of, for both that. Both wins right? I had in 16 and 17 didn't count for either President's Cup or Ryder Cup. And then was that because they changed the criteria like at that time like wow, this right was then the or what? Task force that oh, they were the putting together force. because because you know like Phil only plays one event. He plays China Tiger plays none, you know, and most of the guys that were on the thing don't play. And, you know, I can see both sides, but believe me, I can see both sides. But, you know, if you're going to have an official event, if you're going to make all these other tournaments, now we got 11 in the fall. I mean, 11. You, none of them count? That's a lot of tournaments. I mean, it's a That's, lot of tournaments. Yeah, like you go win, you're like, like, oh, good job, doesn't count you know, for anything. Tell Brendan Todd they don't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. Changed his entire career. Should have had three. Guy should have won three in a row. He'd be leading the FedEx. I mean, tell him it's not important. You mentioned that right there, like the slight that Callaway gave you, right? You're going through surgery and like, hey, sorry, tough break. We're not, you aren't with us anymore. And no. you, you use that as like a chip Bro, on your shoulder, right? I was right? so pissed when I came back. I finished, you know, thank God I got a spot in Malaysia. What's actually funny about the whole thing, if I didn't get the spot in Malaysia, I wasn't even going to start until Sony. So I go to Malaysia, finish what? 33rd. 33rd and then uh, go to Vegas, finish 7th. 
and then we we get smashed. We play the we play the pro am the next night, the next day. And we get smashed at the clubs. <laughs> go play the pro am at Shadow, fly down, win that Sunday. So all of a sudden, I go from having surgery March eighth that year, not knowing if I'm going to play ever again on medical, on medical, come yeah. back in and then make a million nine in the first three events. Yeah, that's second guy ever to win on a medical. While you know, and I was asking that with station. Kelly. That's... I was asking that Kelly because I didn't even know the numbers. How many people have come back from medical? One. In their in their you know They're short their, amount of time, yeah. it doesn't that doesn't happen often. You never have Frazier. But like when you first came out, right? You had doubters yeah. and people like you can't do that. You know, like you're not gonna make it or whatever. Now that you've been on tour for 20 years, you've won, dude. You've done every single thing in the world. Like, how do you find something? How do you find a slight now to like put a chip on your shoulder to be like go prove people wrong? Because you seem like a me against the world. I want to prove everybody wrong. Well, guy. I'm not not necessarily like that. But you know, the new kids, everybody everybody loves the new kids. They all you know. I'm more excited than anything for the future of the tour, the Ryder Cup, the Presidents Cup with the with the talent we have. All these young kids, the Wolf, the Morikawa, you know, uh, uh, who the hell am I missing? There's like 20 of them. Hovland. JT, JT, and Hovland. Well, no, Hovland's he's out, but um, he's not American. Oh, you're talking he's not about American. Americans. Yeah, Got you. JT, and then hopefully Speeds gets back. But the young crew under 30, you know, when DJ's the old guy and the rest of them. I, mean, I just think they're going to dominate this this Ryder Cup thing for about 10 years. It's hard when you, you're sitting there and you're trying to come back and trying to do everything right, and then a company calls you and they drop your ass, and they basically tell you you're too old, we want to go for some young talent, and then everybody else says you're too old, it doesn't happen at 40, da 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 I mean, I got – and that's the thing. I woke up on Sunday in Malaysia, and I was playing with Gary, Gary Woodland and, and Piercy. You know, it was going to be a fun day, this and that. But I woke up, and I was taking a shower, and I'm like looking at the ground going, I'm, gonna, I'm not losing this f-ing tournament. I'm not losing today. And I had a whole different thing about me that day going, no one's going to shit on my prey today. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to play f-ing like I didn't care about the win or the, the money. I didn't care about f-ing. I was going to go out there and I was going to play. Like had to be played on Sunday to win a tournament. I was going to play to win. I came out, you know, firing 500 through, you know, nine holes. And then we just, I didn't really make any mistakes in the back. I made one bogey, but nobody else made birdies. So then that was it. And I got... You know, that night we went out to dinner, and I had, like, one glass of wine. I just wasn't even – I was just, uh, like – Laser. Couldn't, like, I couldn't believe what was going on, like, what had happened. Because I was thinking about, you know, being at the Honda and my arm shaking as I was swinging because I, it was torn and this and that. And, like, thinking, oh, God, I've only made, like, 15 grand. I've played <laughs> You know, I'm going to have surgery. I don't know what's going to happen here. And then to come back and then six, seven months later win a tournament and be on top again, it's like – Wow, because when I got done with that, going into the year, January 1, I was leading the FedEx and the money list. Mm. In the same year that I had you just had, come, off, uh, surgery. come yeah. off surgery. You know, some guy, you've seen a bunch of guys, they have surgery, they're out like five, seven years. Forever. Forever. Milk it. They don't you even know, want to come back. You yeah. know, I had there was one guy that you guys probably know, but yeah. I said, why don't you go back? He said, oh, bro, you don't know what it's like, you know, to come back, you know, this and that. You know, you're never really ready. I said, bro, I don't ever know if I'm ready. I said, but I'm going to put my balls on the table and go out there and play against these guys and see if I can show up with it. That's what it is. That's the mentality I have. Maybe that's yeah, what's... You're, you're definitely different, and that's obviously a good <laughs> and thing. And your that's balls why are been... on the table. I love it. You know, that. you got you to gotta go out there and do it. Like, you know, Elko always told me, you got you to gotta go out there and show your ass. He goes, if you got to show your ass, you show it. Because if something bad happens and it happens, it is what it is. It'll only make you better. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about someone who has not left your side in a very, very long time. And that's... Well, that's... He has, actually. This beautiful man who's sitting over here. He you can't see him. His name is Mike Hartford, otherwise known as H has been on your bag since 2001. He actually catches now me. Now it is the yeah. longest lasting relationship on tour. Oh, yeah. did uh, Fluff Congrats. Grant. Second. Oh, second. Sorry. Fluff. Fluff. Check. Fluff's 112. Yeah, I forget I about him all the time. He actually can We actually are the longest probably because I actually got a better stat for you, even better than that. Um, how many how many players out there? And you're going to oh, know. So you're asking the questions now. I'm asking I like the questions. Okay, it's a little role reversal. How many players do you think on the PGA Tour today – or even in the last 10 years, okay. have ever worked for their caddy God and been damn paid. It. Why do you ruin it? Mm. This was my next jump lead. Ahead. Two. I'm going to jump ahead. I'll say one. One. Yeah. Knew First it. off, I said this on the telecast <laughs> last year on CBS. <laughs> I brought this to, yes. the, to the world. Nobody knows that. Now I The only player on the PGA Tour to ever work ever. for his caddy. Talk, worked, tell I, me. Tell well, the world. I, 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 met him, I met him in 1990, and, you know... We, we put on the golf team this and that, and then, you know, he would drive me around, and, and we'd go to lunch, and, you know, uh, I said, you know, I don't even know how it came up. I don't know if I asked him or he asked me to help him with, with the deal, but we had 
bunch of houses and we did that stuff and then that was it and we'd have you know we'd have lunch in the middle of the day and then we'd, we'd do it and then we'd go play golf and and then um you know he, he's carried for me in high school he carried for me in college he carried for me of course you know i went to i went to issue and i qualified for two usams only got to play one the coach won't let me go the second one mm-hmm. Oh, because the orientation or whatever, right? Freshman orientation. Freshman orientation. orientation? Yeah. Are you kidding? Now, unfortunately, I can't say anything bad about Randy because he just passed. But, you know, that is something that will still piss me off forever, the fact that I qualified for it. Me and him qualified for it, The whole and, and the guy wouldn't let me go. Yeah, that's a tough one as an amateur. I mean, that's the pinnacle. It's a tough one to, yeah, it's a pinnacle. I mean, Colt won. I mean, it's a hard – It's a hard. That's it. It's an incredible that's, win. That's a, ma- that's a major. It's dude. an incredible it shows win. anyone can win. Yeah, right? <laughs> true. If Colt won, think what you would have done, yeah. bro. How about Holy 20? shit. Oh yeah, Quinny. And Quinny's well, dumbass. Sleaze, Sleaze was at the USAM that I won, and just said he got a couple bad breaks. That's why he missed match Dude, play. Dude, Pat, well, of course, his Pat. I had that. to play 32 holes the second day because of fog, bro. Well, no one can overcome. I played like 180. That I actually week. played with we your boy that. Billy Horschel that day. Did you? Yes. Nice. We'll talk about that later. But, but yeah. let's stay on. <laughs> let's stay on H for a second because he has been by your side forever, which Every is step. unbelievable. Which shows that opposite people can work well together because they couldn't have two more. He's the nicest. Caring guy I've ever met in my life. Now I know you. you don't know him. <laughs> now, then there's you. Now I know you don't know him. But I want to talk about this one particular event that happened in Hawaii many, many years ago. A little game of credit card roulette was involved. Oh, boy. Oh, good game. Which I'm a big fan Very of. Very good game, yes. Can you share this story with our wonderful listeners out there? Yes. Yeah, so, we, like I said, <laughs> we just met John, and we go to dinner with John Daly and, and his whole crew. We've got like 20 of us at this table. You can't even see the other side of the table. There's so many people. So I told Daly, I said, look, I said, we got to get this. Well, hold on. Before you continue this, we got to explain that H might be a little frugal. There's no little. He is. (laughs) He makes the eagle on the quarter screen. That's how how tight he holds that quarter. I've not not heard that before. I I have not either. I haven't heard that. I love that. I love that. Okay, now continue with your story. (laughs) All right, keep going. All right. Because otherwise, this wouldn't have made any sense. You are not getting a dollar out of that man. (laughs) If he was dying, he'd have to think about whether he was going to spend the money to keep him alive or not. That's what we're talking about here. Oh, that's good. No, he calls it frugal. There's other names for it. Can't get into them. We're just going to stick with frugal. Frugal works. Anyway, so we go to this dinner. We haven't made a dime yet. It's, it's our first year, isn't it? First year. We have, we've just gone to it. We haven't made a dime yet together. And JD shows up. We all go to dinner. There's like 20 of us. And the bill, the bill had to be, what, nine grand or something? It was heavy. We had made a penny. So I told JD, I said, look, I said, we got to get him. We got to get him. We're going we're gonna to put this thing together, and everyone's going to put it in, but we, we're going to get her make sure – that he gets picked. He's not going to know it. And this is before, you know, I mean, I've with him so many times now. He would catch on. <laughs> but this is way before he would have caught on to this. So comes up, start picking, 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 picking. Now it's getting down to nitty. Was it was it a pick? They just picked one card. You eliminate they pick, one yeah, card. They, no, they just picked oh, pick pick one, one card. Okay. So it looks like a Chinese fan, right? And it's a, and sure as <laughs> she knew which one to pick. She picks it, and his eyes got like this. <laughs> Like, thanks, H. You know that, and his, he said his heart like skipped a beat because he couldn't believe. <laughs> he told me he's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can't. That's it. That's it. I'm gonna have to sell an organ. It's like losing his mind. That was uh, that was a great story. But see, you know, I, I, I guess I've him so many times now. He doesn't. He, he catches on to my stuff now. That's Pat, such Pat, a good game. Yeah. Pat so, tells me H will go to Thailand on vacation, and mm-hmm. he actually makes money when he goes on vacation. Yeah, of course. He doesn't he pay sell, for his, sell yeah. his shoes. No, he doesn't pay no. for it. He's oh. got. He's just, he gets know, paid to fly over there. Stay yeah. Oh, hotel, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has free miles fun. ticket. The, the hotel's like a like a dollar. You know, and the dinner's <laughs> about three. You went to Thailand Voucher for how long? For a meal, and how sell much that. did it cost you? What's give us your best dollar trip? Oh, that was the Hawaii trip. You said. <laughs> For those that couldn't hear, he said two weeks cost him seventy five dollars in Hawaii. Hawaii. Seventy five dollars all in, bro. I spent seventy five dollars at that CNBC store before I get on the plane. <laughs> yeah, getting a Fiji water, Get, getting water, getting $16. magazines. I mean, I'm I'm a hundred before I even get on the plane. Oh, that's incredible. two weeks. Can you imagine going somewhere for anywhere? I don't care. Seventy five. Stay here for two weeks. Stay at home and not spend more than seventy five dollars. You, you know, can't do Postmates. Postmates. I do that. Postmates a day. Exactly, dude. <laughs> It is, but see, he loves these stories. Yeah, he he loves to get them. You're not going to get his ass. He's going to get them, and he loves. Yes, it. he's always coming out. He's the winner every time. If um, you there's some there's great trivia questions. He how you know how long would you sit in an airport for? Oh, for the call it 
A thousand dollars for the voucher. A thousand dollar voucher. How many hours? Give me an hour. It's got to be in the airport, though. I'll stay the night. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, said I'd stay, stay the, the night. night. Oh my god, it's incredible. I, I mean, love that. He's winning, dude. He's this is winning. where we get to. This is how we, you know. It, he's a, he is the dead opposite of me. I, mean, I can't spend a dollar fast enough. Yeah. And he can't save it fast enough. Can we talk about another dead opposite? Speaking of a guy that was on our show, what, two weeks ago, we had Paul Casey on, your boy oh, from yeah. ASU. Yeah. And he told a story about the first time he showed up, mm. coming overseas, didn't know shit about Arizona, didn't know anything about anything. It was just like, yeah, I'm going over there to play golf. Shows up at Car- ASU Carson. Rest in peace, ASU Carson, yeah. of course. Shows up there, plops a bag of balls down, he's going to hit some chips. You waddle over at some point during the deal. It said he, he, this is what he told us. You plopped down a bag of balls and proceeded to hit 30 yard pitch shots directly over his head onto the chipping ring, basically like flexing on him, like, yo, this is, this is my team. This is my I, I town. Could, I could probably believe that. Is that, that. true or no? Yeah, I can, I can <laughs> or do you even remember that? that? No, I can probably, I don't remember it. I don't remember much from college, but I can, I can probably believe that. But yeah, that's an, I it feel like, it sounds like something I would do. And then he said you two became very good friends. Like, he lived next to you. You guys played yeah. cards, all that stuff. That seems like, speaking of an odd couple, that seems like a, vi- you, Paul Casey, super nice, kind of soft spoken European. Yeah. And then you're Me. you. You know what yeah. I mean? There's, there's a teddy bear inside. Oh, there's there. 100% no, there a 100% of teddy bear. No, there is. It's just, it's just rare. It's rare. You know, especially in this day and age, it's tough out there. Media is tough. Life's Social media is tough. I mean, it ain't easy Social being media is tough. World class be, golfer. You got to be tough. I mean, you literally got to have thick skin these days, or else you just crack. You crack. I have it though. He right, said what? you right. broke him in, kind of like you. You were welcome to America, welcome to college. Probably, but he's turned out to be unbelievable. He's he's an incredible player. Obviously, you know, thankfully they're not going to do that thing with the Ryder Cup where he couldn't be on. Or, I mean, that was so stupid anyway. But. He's an unbelievable player. You know, he really is. He's made a ton of cash. He keeps himself. He's got an incredible work ethic. I mean, you know, that's why he's been successful. But yeah, I that's don't know. That's what you get when you got Pat Perez as a mentor. In college. <laughs> exactly. who, who better could you show up as a freshman and be like, hey, this guy is going to show you around. It's Pat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I've, okay, ruined, so I've ruined some too. I'll fail out pretty quick. <laughs> there we go. I think it's time to see if we can crack you a little bit because, unless you have something else to get to, but it is time for emergency. I mean, we night. could go for seven hours and we here could, right now, but we can but go. We, straight, we go. We can go to the. We go to eat and I. So with our with our every guest we do, we have an emergency nine segment, nine questions that are just fun to get okay. to know you yep. a little more. So I'm gonna start us off with number one. Peel the layers back. Movie about your life. You can pick any actor, dead or alive, to play you. Who plays you? Oof. Mm-hmm. Think on it, bro. We are, we have an answer. We actually are unanimous was, in yeah. this, which is <laughs> interesting. You've probably heard it. Well, Kenny Powers, I'm sure. Yeah, that's Danny the one. McBride. But 100%. not even the actor, just like that specific no, it, it, character. It's, it's, it's really damn close. The same dude. Not only he's got great moss like me, but it, he's <laughs> very moss. Great that's moss. a good term, dude. He's very close. He's that's very, good... very close. Yeah. Do you there get that on else? the course? Huh? Do you get that Kenny Powers on the course or not? Bro, I get everything. I mean, I get... I get Kenny Powers, I get Salad, Moss, you know. You, I've got every hair comment through it. The problem is it's always from guys. Yeah, that's so tough. I don't, that, that's why you I don't got know. You got that I, dude appeal, Maybe bro. I should cut it. Maybe. It's never from a girl. Yeah, yeah. Never. Other than my wife, that's it. No, dudes the rest love of you are, chicks only frightened guys. by you. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I don't need any. All right, so who's your actor? I was yeah. I was gonna say Kenny Powers. Cause that's about well, uh, that's, first unanimous yeah, in the history. That's about uh, yeah. That, I think I that's mean, really the only option. It really I mean, is to the be only option. with the I mean, hair. I mean, there's it's no too doubt. accurate. The hair, he's just he's perfect. He's vulgar. He's, he's brash. loud. Yeah, he tells it the way it is, and that's the way it usually is. A lot of people can't take it, but agreed. It is what it is. It is what it is. Feed Next him. Question. All right, number two, PJ Tour player you'd least like to get in a bar fight with. <laughs> I feel like you hold you you'd hold your I, own I, out there, but is there some I, guy you'd I be could. like, ah, that's not the one for me? I mean, usually most people say Ernie's getting a little older mm-hmm. now. Kokrak is definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got that Kokrak's, Midwest country, he's got that country, he's country strong, like bro. he'll he's, smash a beer bottle over your head. And he's got you know he's got that drop of a hat. If I walked in and said, Jay, I need you. We got action. It's going. We're not well. What's going on? It's especially it's if he's got a whiskey he's just, in him. He's oh, froggy. No, I he's him, froggy. It's on. Okay. If I just say we got something. Let's go. I actually like that. He and just went on. off in my book. Yeah, and that, that's what's on. I don't really know. I mean, some of these guys, none of these guys can fight for shit out on the tour. I guarantee <laughs> These guys get the <laughs> can them so fast. Never been around a fight, never seen a fight. They're not tough enough to fight. Um, yeah, I, w- I would say Kokrak. I w- I'm not really afraid of anybody out there on tour. I mean, there's nobody nobody big enough. I mean, everybody wears a size 30. You don't think Justin, you, Justin Thomas comes looking at you the wrong way? He wouldn't look at me the wrong. Way. That's my boy. That's my boy. I love JT. 
Doesn't. All right, so I Kokrak. protect him. All right, so Kokrak. Kokrak. Yeah. Kokrak. I like that answer. I definitely say Kokrak. Yeah, I, I, that's very believable. All right, if you look back over your whole PGA Tour career and you could take a mulligan on one shot you hit, what would it be mm. off the top of your head? We might you need get, to ask H this. You H, get one, H, yeah, H probably H, already knows we, it. We know what it is. <laughs> Whatever one costs the most money. <laughs> 2002 Pebble Beach 18th tee shot. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Yeah, that'll do it. If, if we had to do it again today. Change we, club? Or yeah, you switch into something else, less was, than lumber? It was in off the right. That was the problem. It was playing long. So you know, we had to make birdie to win and five to tie. So looking back at it now, it happens all so fast. I mean, maybe a maybe a three iron, three iron, you know, and hopefully get it on. But it the wind was blowing so hard, it wasn't really – it was really the only club. What do you think, H? Yeah, H. Do you agree it. with all this? Four iron was long. Oh, that's right. You don't what even know what clubs dude, you have in the back. H is like a, <laughs> an elephant over here with no, this. No, he, he knew we played with, uh, uh, what the hell is that guy's name? The first, our first tournament in Hawaii. Tenagawa. Tenagawa. Yeah. He oh, remembered that. Ken Tenagawa. No idea. I saw him at the store. Yeah, great yeah. dude. Yeah. 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 Guest no, on had him on the radio yeah. show the he, other day. I didn't remember who the hell hey, we H, played with. Hey, H, how much did that hole cost you in earnings? You know he knows that. 290000 That's the final answer. H, would you agree that's the shot you could – You'd like to t- have over? Yes. Okay. All right. Damn, unanimous no unanimous from... Uh, All right. Number four. From Team Perez. This is a good question. All right. Number here we go. T- uh, question. question four. When you're known for your locks. Would you rather shave your head or give up booze for a, one month? Shave my head. <laughs> for only one month, dog? Jeez, you have a drinking Especially problem, right bro. now? You're, you have a drinking problem. I can't problem. go... Bro, I'm trying to get past 11 o'clock without a drink right Yeah, now. you work in the yard strictly so you don't drink Just early. Just so I don't have to drink early. <laughs> No. So you would legit if it was if it had to be one of those two you'd, you'd rather shit all this dude that's a, that's years well, in the making I yeah, feel like I, I, yeah I don't know all right thirty days yeah that's 30 not 30s. long enough not long enough I'd probably quit drinking all right let's let's do this let's bet all right starting now no because I want to drink with you I don't, don't want to all right you got to you got let's move this away the clock starts now <laughs> hell no all right all right all right Get number five what would your wife Ashley say is the most annoying thing about you. Where does it start? Boy, who knows that? That's line a long is. list, bro. <laughs> she, I, I guarantee, would be my cleanliness. How you are ridiculously OCD with the <laughs> I, clean thing. I'm beyond. Oh, I was about to, I was there's about only to one other guy worse than I am, but no, there's another guy that's a good friend of yours as well. Charles Barkley's the same way. Is he really? Oh my god! If there's like a little ring from a cup, he's wiping it nonstop. Freaks are you out. OCD clean? Oh, big time! I forgot. I about hate that. shit that's out of order yep. or out of the place. Like, I can't take like it. Like when you pack for a tournament, are you like, all right, this is my Thursday sock, this is my Thursday no, underwear? Are I you have, that guy? I have, I have it totally organized now. What I'm going to wear, but my side of the closet is perfect. Everything is color coordinated. Mm-hmm. It's only Jordan shirts here. And I got some Willie Murray up there, golf shirts here, pants down here by the color. Shoes are organized in each thing by color. But um, even like at your old house, like the fridge was like you had your your orange sodas, your oh Mountain yeah. Dews. Everything was lined like perfectly. They're that's all, shocking. Just, that's shocking to me, by the way. That came from my mom. I wouldn't I wouldn't think that about Same. you. My mom, look. she called it. A, she'd walk in my door and she'd go, "All right, it's GI party," you know, from like the you know boot camp, and we'd have to clean this shit up and down. And it literally drives Ashley crazy because she's the opposite of me. If something sat there for a decade, it would sit there for a decade. And I've talked to her mom about it a hundred times. She was, she's not going to change. She's been that way forever. She's not going to change. But she does get it going. She does get going where she'll get in these moods and she'll start just cleaning the whole thing. And then it's over. But I guarantee it drives her crazy when I'm always asking her, why does this have to be here? Does this have to be here? Are we going to clean this? Are we going to do this? Are we going to do this? That would drive her nuts. All right. That's, me. That's very but, clean. That's something most people listening would know about you. I think just looking at you, that you're like super neat freak. All right, that's that's legit. That's legit. Opposites attract. Opposites, Opposites attract. Do attract. Obviously. All right. <laughs> you got the you got the the rugged whatever you want to call it exterior. You got the goatee. You got the flowing locks. You wear a lot of black. You're a tough, dude. What's the softest thing about Pat Perez? That um, people don't know. When when are you just like little putty? Well, you know, when when someone needs help or something like that, I mean, I have because you are teddy bear. No, of course, but I, you know, I, I I help people out, you know, when I can. I don't I don't have to, you know, put it on social media like everybody else does. But God bless you. Um, you know, if you're gonna do something for somebody, do it. Don't do it because the media is there. I mean, the golf channel and all these other things, there's all this like feel good story, and I get it, I get it. But you know, do it if you're gonna do it. Just do it anyway. Don't you don't need media. Do something. 
You don't have to tell anybody about it. Just do it and then drive away or, or go away and just feel good that you did something. But I've helped a lot of people out. I've, you know, I, I give advice and I've done this and that. And I don't need any credit for it. If somebody asks me, I'll give, them a, I'll give them a straight answer and tell them what they either need to fix or not fix or whatever. And if somebody needs help, like if Colt called me and said, hey, bro, I'm, I'm, I just got in some shit just now, I'd help them immediately. Well, I was going to talk to you about it after the show. Well, that's interesting because <laughs> we see this open. We've we got rest, we want to talk about it now. We can. <laughs> Pretty significant gambling debt yeah. during this time. Oof. But I was going to say your sensitive side. I know this for a fact that she runs your <laughs> your little daughter Piper. Oh, I man. mean, yeah, she, that'll melt you are, quick. She is daddy's girl. She is unbelievable. Yeah. We're having we're having so much fun with her. She's she's incredible. She's absolutely amazing. I mean, she's literally changed me. Yeah, yes. that'll she do us. That she will is. And Ashley always said, "You need a girl." Did you need a girl? If you get a boy, you're gonna be hard on him. You're gonna raise him rough, and you're gonna raise him tough, and you're gonna be on his case. A girl, you won't be able to do that, and she's gonna own you, and she does. I yep. mean, she's <laughs> like I literally get up. I get up in the morning earlier to go to the store to get all her stuff for her her food for the day or for days, and I'm always worried like if she's gonna run out and you know of course separate her food and this and that and yeah. organize it and all this stuff so so she can eat. she doesn't even know what's going on. She just knows that she has. Yeah, with a boy, food. you'd be like. Whatever, like, dude. Right, we'll cool. Figure here's, it out. Here's some cereal. You'll be Get fine. an Uber yeah, down to AJ's exactly. and go get your stuff. <laughs> go get a job, bro. Yeah. You can buy your own go food. Go stay with Uncle H for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Number seven. Uh, what's a hidden talent you have that no one else would know? <sighs> Nothing. I thought you were going to say you're cooking. Well, I definitely can cook, but, you know, it's not like it's... You know, yeah, but not everybody knows you can cook. No, I, mean, I, I, I love player. to cook. My, like, Especially in, in normal off weeks. I'll, I'll start thinking about breakfast. That's actually another thing I'd probably piss Ashley on. I always ask her about <laughs> breakfast when we get up. Or at, you know, when we get up, I go, what do you want for dinner? Goes, Why are you always thinking about dinner? I go, because I got a plan. I gotta, I'm a planner. I got to know. Am I going to smoke something? Are we going to barbecue? Da, da, da. Because I'm going to go to the store, obviously, and then figure this shit out. And, but, yeah, I love to barbecue. My, my favorite thing is about, you know, start having a drink about 2.30, getting all this stuff together, start, you know, getting ready to cook, and then put it on about 6 and and get, get yeah, after gun. three or four hours of drinking, I like to get to the cooking. Oh, and then I pass out about 8.30, which is great. Me and Piper that's actually the have the bedtime right now. It's perfect. That's that's the routine. <laughs> get no yeah. beef from me. All right, number eight. I love it. All right, number eight. Favorite guy to party with on the PJ Tour? Well, it used to be Colt. <laughs> yeah. It still can be. I mean, I'm not yeah, dead you, yet. No, it's, you're not. Uh, you know, he's recently removed. Really, We've had uh, some times. I'd really say Kokrak. I mean, Kokrak, when we go out, he, <laughs> this was the greatest story ever. So that night we finished, I finished seventh. He finished like. 10th, I think, or something. Didn't he H? He played well in Vegas. H is an encyclopedia <laughs> so, of, of oh, finishes. Holy he, shit. He has everything. He has yeah. everything. Okay. So we get, I said, bro, I said, we're going back to the hotel. Change real quick. We're going to Whiskey Down. This is like five. Mm-hmm. So get down. We're going to start drinking. We're going to Hakkasan, though, later. We're going to go to dinner at, at uh, Morimoto, and then we're gone. So we've, I mean, we've, been on the, we've been on the sauce now for hours. And you know how it is in Hakkasan. It's about one o'clock. Oh, we're with that Coca-Cola group, mm-hmm. with that whole all the CEO, all the all the people from Coca-Cola. So we've got this huge ass booth we're right next to the the uh, DJ and Co-Crack at about eleven thirty. He is he's completely spread out like this. He's passed out dead. I mean, he thought he was dead. He's like, and the bouncer comes over and he goes, "He's got to go." I said, "He's not going anywhere." I said, "Let him sleep." I said, "You going to carry him all the way to his room?" No, no, we're going to put him outside. I said, you're not going to do that either. I said, just go away. So I gave him a honey, and I said, just go away for a little bit. I said, he'll be up. He'll be yeah, up. He'll get up. Fine. True shit, about 1.30, got up, <laughs> got back in that whiskey. About 5 a.m., we were all good. A little two-hour nap That's at Oxide. <laughs> Sometimes you <laughs> got to take a nap in the club, dude. He, I mean, you couldn't have woken him up dead. You could have set him on fire, and it wouldn't matter. It would uh, not have mattered. But he's awesome. got a nap at the club occasionally. That, that's about the only guy I real, you know, sit around and drink. He likes to get, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Last Coke one. Coke rack. Learn a lot of good Is stuff. Is there a nightmare pairing for Pat Perez? Least- Can't say it. Um, oh God! Yes, you can. All right, just give us the yeah, initials sure. and then and then their full name. So there is, but we're not going to talk about it. All no, right, we favorite. talked about it when, at the store this morning. There's there's two, but I can't. Okay, fine. We'll just switch it. Favorite pairing. All okay. right, yeah, we'll we'll let you off. <laughs> really, anybody other than those two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you're out there, he hates you. We don't know who it is, but he hates you and wants to play with everybody else. You know, the thing is, I, I get along. I know everybody so well now, and I've you know cause I've been out so long. I've gotten to know everybody. But I, I don't really ever have a bad time with anybody. Favorite pairing, though, I mean, obviously I would love to get Tiger, play with him. I love playing with, you know, I played with Rory at Boston. That was awesome to watch him. He's the best driver of the ball I've ever seen. I know Tiger's the best player, 
But if, if Tiger had Rory's driver for that 10-year run, I think he would have won 1,000 tournaments. Yeah, I mean – I mean, it is the it is the most impressive thing I've ever seen. His driver is absolutely just spooky. It's incredible. It's incredible. Well, I'm gonna. You know, we were talking about how he'll help anybody out in need and all this, and and we're gonna end it on this story because this is one of my favorite stories of knowing Pat for as long as I have. So we used to play a lot of practice rounds together because we like to muck it up. But yep. Yep. we're at the Shell Houston Open one year. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, already he knows. knows what the he story knows. Is. All right, I'm I'm all ears this right is now. Incredible. So we're playing, and it's just me and him. H and our caddies, obviously, and we're talking, mucking up. We get to 18, tough tee shot, and I was like, I was struggling a little bit. I was like, hey, Pat, you mind filming one of these for me? Well, he's like, yeah, sure. So I handed my phone. He's filming it. Well, I didn't know this, but there was this guy on the railing <laughs> behind, okay? Only and I just guy there. Picture this. Only I mean, guy there. One dude in the gallery one dude. watching the practice. Most time. ridiculous mustache you've ever seen. Gary ever. McCord? No. 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 Oh, okay. Just like so, strong. I mean, strong, strong here. These big, like, a cop. Duval. Oakley sunglasses. Yep. He's a like cop. A He's a definite cop. <laughs> no, he looked Probably. like a cop. He did. Yeah, okay. of course. This like pink, black, purple tie dye looking picture. shirt and like tear away Adidas sweatpants. Tear away Adidas. Like, couldn't look. Tear away on the golf course. Tear away. I actually respect that. With a tie dye golf shirt. No, I respect it so, all. I, I like don't this. know. This. That's porn my porn uncle. Stash, That's my uncle. He's a big, big porn fan. stash and shades, and he's leaning on this rail. He's got like a nice this. pose. He's okay. got arms crossed. So he's like, "Yeah, I'll film it." So I hit this shot, and I go, "How was that?" And he goes, "So." good <laughs> and so then he hands me the phone and i press play and the camera's on this guy the whole entire time <laughs> what's it he doing just standing there bro he's just standing there he's just by himself how why he was out there i, have no I idea. think this did he like, know he was being filmed no was he looking no. at like hey what's up i Colt? think this was 2012 we're still looking for this guy again he bro, is the greatest I, dude I ever i put out an apb for this guy <laughs> i cannot that guy's undercover with the – he's a, oh a fed my God. undercover. But his comment about how my swing looked when I thought yeah. he was actually Dude, it's being perfect. Nice. It uh, couldn't, dude, couldn't be better. Gonna We're going to find the photo. It's great. We'll, we'll send that out. That would yeah. be incredible. This is the greatest. If anybody oh, knows this God. guy, please tell him he's our, <laughs> he's our hero. And we need, it was so good. We need him back. <laughs> All right, Pat. Well, so good, dude. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Yes. Course, yeah. Appreciate it very much. And that was Pat Perez joining us on Golf Subpar. And that was the one and only Pat Perez. I mean, it doesn't get more entertaining than that guy, Sleaze. We were here live. I don't know what that's going to sound like after the edited <laughs> version. There's going to be numerous bleeps, and there could be entire portions of the conversation that are just X'd out because they're like too hot for TV. But he's he's so great. I mean, he he says what's on his mind. He doesn't yeah. sugarcoat anything, and I, I love I love him for that. Love him or hate him, it's kind of like a, a breath of fresh air and nowadays where like immediate people are so afraid to say anything because like people come attack him over here, attack him over here. It's always pissing somebody off, so instead they just say nothing that anyone cares about. Pat's like the reverse of that and was just like, here's what I really think, and I don't give a damn what anybody else thinks about it, which is like refreshing whether you hate it or it, love it. It really is. I mean, he's no not PC or anything. He's like, <laughs> look, that's how I feel. I'm going to tell you. If you like it, great. If not, I don't really care. Yeah. It doesn't seem to, and it seems genuine. It's not like a fake I don't care. It's like, I really don't care what you think. And Pat is one guy that's going to be glued to his TV during this last dance, obviously being a Jordan ambassador. Incredible shoe collection he has. I've been lucky enough to see it. I know you're itching to get over there and take a look. Seen it on social media. We asked him for a video. Hopefully I can get a peek in there. I want to see these Wahlbergs. I want to see all the exclusives that nobody else has gotten. And also, shout out to Pat for kind of being on the forefront of getting Jordan to release all these golf shoes that are coming out now. Granted, everyone in the world is wearing them now, so they're they're, they're they're getting saturated, but it, like without that, without his help, probably a lot of these don't come out. His whole closet, his whole house, everything is Jordan brand now. It's um, I don't know if he wears clothes that aren't Jordan brand. Yeah, I haven't seen him in anything specifically on his feet that aren't Jordan. And by the way, he's got a thousand half of those plus. He's probably never worn before. Well, that was a lot of fun with Pat. Um, as always, you can follow us on social media at golf underscore subpar on Instagram and Twitter. And you are at the sleazy man at the sleazy man. S L E E Z Y M A N. Tough one. Tricky. Very tricky. And I'm just at Colt Nost. Very, very simple. But everybody out there, stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll talk to you on next week's golf subpar. Golf subpar.